Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to my channel, which is something I can't believe that I'm actually saying. Uh, today I wanted to film something I've wanted to film for a very very long time <laughs> and something that I'm actually incredibly excited about and I could talk about these books for hours, um, which is my New York Review Books NYRB books. So NYRB uh, is a publisher slash... Uh, I guess, literary magazine uh, journal. I don't know the official term. And they have amazing, um, amazing books and amazing selection. All of their books come in this kind of design. And they have these solid colors on the spines. And ever since I got back into reading, like two years ago, I've been more aware of publishers and the kind of uh, publishing houses that are out there, the kind of books that they publish, uh, the kind of editions, collector's editions, things like that, which is something I had never really interested myself in in the past. But um, yeah, so I've as I've gotten into it, I've figured out which publishers I like and which ones I can always rely on to give me, you know, good recommendations, like good titles, good translations, things like that. So that being said, I'm a big fan of NYRB. And I just wanted to sit down and do like a collection video, I guess. I don't know. I I have too many books for a full video though. So I'm either going to split, split this into two parts or just like speed through it. <laughs> um, but yes, that being said, full disclaimer, I haven't read all of these books because um, I was making pretty good progress with my NYRB books, but then I ordered from their sale like in 2021. And it was a really good sale. So I got a lot of <laughs> a lot of books in that. So those I have not all read yet. Um, but yes, I'm going to get into it. So I'm going to try to go in some kind of order. But I just wanted to start with my probably my favorite NYRB book because it's a sentimental favorite. It's probably my favorite book of all time, which is Mamed My Hawk, or Inja Mamed as we call it in Turkish, uh, by Yashar Kemal, who is who was a famous uh, author from Turkey, who was also Kurdish, and he. This is the first book in his Inja Mamed or Mamed My Hawk series. I think there's a total of four of them, and in in Turkey, a lot of people read uh, this book in school, and he has also a lot of other. Uh, works, whether it's like short books or poetry, things like that. And I can't believe that NYRB published his book in English. It's a beautiful edition. It's amazing and I recommend this to everybody and I wish that more people knew about Yashar Kemal in the US or in the West, whatever you want to call it. This is a great book. Yeah, starting off strong. Okay, next I'm going to go with the orange theme because I arranged these by color. So this is Max Havilar by Multatuli, which basically this is a Dutch colonial classic, or, or rather an, really an Indonesian classic. Um, this was a, like, it's by a pen name, so Multatuli is a pen name, which means I have suffered greatly. And it was kind of like a colonial expose of the Dutch colonial system. And yeah, I found this at a used bookstore, and again, it's amazing that NYRB like publishes this, and it's another cool cover. Really excited to read this. Okay, next, do I have any other orange? Hmm, I'm looking, I'm looking. Yes, so next I have um, Catalan Street by um, Mogda Jobo. I think that's how you say her name. Um, yeah, it's spelled Magda Zabo, but I think it's pronounced Mogda Jobo. I hope that I am saying that correctly. She's a very famous Hungarian author, and I have two other books by her also in NYRB. Uh, I discovered her through NYRB, and this one I actually did read. I didn't love this one as much as her other book, which I'm going to show, called The Door, which is like an amazing, amazing book. Um, this is about, about a family, uh, rather two families on the eve of World War II, or maybe in the midst of World War II. And uh, afterwards, uh, living in Budapest, and yes, it's kind of about reckoning with war and family trauma, 
it's um, pretty famous, I think, and most people really like it. I would highly recommend it. I think it, I personally just thought it had some shortcomings, but whatever. This is not a review video. <laughs> this is me speeding through these books, but yes, so I have Cotillon Street. Okay, any other orange? Yes. Next, I have Family and Borghesia, which are two short stories. I think Family is a novella and Borghesia is technically a short story by the one, the only, Natalia Ginsburg. Again, I was able to discover Natalia Ginsburg through this publisher, and she is now one of my all-time favorite people, authors, whatever. So once again, this publisher, like, coming in clutch, introducing me to amazing works, especially works in translation. I highly, highly recommend this um, little collection. And again, the cover is amazing. And yes. Okay, continuing. Um, I might just continue with my Natalia Ginsburgs. Next, I have a, um, a book by Natalia Ginsburg, which is Family Lexicon. This is her probably her most famous book. It won a lot of prize in Italy when it came out, I believe in the 60s. And it's semi-autobiographical. It's about her family. And yes, we're, who were a big anti-fascist Jewish family um, and did quite a bit during World War II and some of them had to flee, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a very, very interesting story. Um, and she writes it really beautifully. Highly recommend this. Again, the cover is so nice. Whoa. Yes, there we go. It's like this burnt olive color. Yes. Next, I have Valentino, Valentino and Sagittarius. Also by Natalia Ginsburg. I think these are both technically novellas. Amazing cover. Look at that cover. It's like a burgundy color overall. This was the first Natalia Ginsburg I ever got because I just saw this cover and I was like, ooh, NYRB. I like randomly picked it up in Waterstones um, in Cambridge. And yeah, I mean, another another really, really good one I highly recommend if you want to get into Natalia Ginsburg. But I think Family and Borghesias. Um, I liked that one a bit better than this, but this is another classic. You can't go wrong. Do I have any other Natalia Ginsburgs in this? No, I think those are the three that they've published. Um, but yes, really quickly, let me do the other Mogda Jobo. So this is Isa's Ballad. I have not read this one. Um, this one's another really nice burgundy. And yes, very, very excited to read this. This is the last Mogda Jobo that I have not read. Um, from NYRB. Next, I have Abigail by Mogda Jovo again. This is, I think, uh, her most famous book in Hungary, and I love, love, love this book. I highly recommend it. It's about a girls' boarding school on the eve of World War II. As you can see, the cover is kind of like pupils in a classroom, I think. I could not tell what this cover was for the longest time, but now I can see. Um, but yes, I highly, highly recommend this. It's a very feel-good read, but it's also like political and um on the back it kind of compares it to like harry potter which immediately like was like sending off warning signs i was like no i don't want to read another harry potter but um i wouldn't compare it to that it's just because it's like set in the school it's really nothing to do with that um but yes this is abigail and then her probably my favorite book by her that I've read, which is The Door, which is probably her most famous one in, in the U.S. Um, this is a, about two women, um, one of them being a an author who's living at home and the other being her cleaning lady um, named Everence, right? Everence? Emerence, I'm sorry, Emerence. Um, it's very like psychological, it's about the relationship. It's very, very well written. It's very kind of tense but also very introspective. It's just, it's a really, really good book. I highly recommend it. And this is in like a whitish gray. But yeah, this is The Door. So those are all of my Mogda Jobos and Ginsburgs. Next, uh, following with like authors of which I have multiple, I'm going to follow in that vein. So I have these two books. Let me just show them together. By, I hope I say his name right, Leonardo Scassia? Scassia. Uh, he's an Italian author. He's Sicilian and he writes like thrillers slash detective stories slash mafia stories set in Sicily. And I think he's quite famous in Italy. Uh, I'm sorry, he, yeah, he passed away, I think in the early 2000s, but he was like a big um, public intellectual. 
and it has these editions also um, have a lot of information about the author, uh, particularly in the front of the book. This one doesn't have a lot, but usually they have like a full bio, so that's also really nice. Um, but yes, I have To Each His Own, which I read. It was pretty good. Um, it was interesting. I really like reading about Sicily, so that's why I particularly enjoyed it and gravitated towards it. Um, if you like thrillers, you might like this, though it's not really about the thriller content itself. It's more about like the setting and the place and also some of the the political or societal uh, like social commentary that he's making. The next one I have is The Wine Dark Sea, which I have not read. Oh, is it gonna focus? Yes, The Wine Dark Sea. Um, but yeah, this is a really, really pretty cover again and they look nice together. I think they published, they have another one of his, which is something, Owl. The Blind Owl, no, not The Blind Owl. That's another, that's an Iranian book. Uh, something about the owl. But yes, yeah, so um, if I like this one, I might go ahead and get the other one um, by him. Okay, <laughs> next I'm, oh, I'll quickly go through um, these two, which I have, which are by Patrick Lee Fermer, A Time of Gifts, and this one is um, A Time to Keep Silence. So these are books by a British man in the... 20s and 30s I believe and he basically traveled through Turkey, Europe um yes and these are like his travel diaries tra and travel logs. I haven't I skimmed these um a couple years ago and yes I I'm a fan of like travel writing and I'm interested in the region so that's why I picked these up. There's another one um that NYR NYRB has published from him which is uh, called Rumeli and it's travels to Greece or Northern Greece, I believe. So I, I've i definitely got to get that one. Um, and I plan on getting it once I finish these. And then just really quickly in, that, in a similar vein, I also have um, this, which is the Towers of Trebizond. Trebizond is the <laughs> English uh, writing of Trabzon, which is a city in Northern Turkey on the, on the Black Sea Coast. It's actually a novel, I believe. Yeah, so it's kind of like a travel novel. Uh, and there's adventure set in the backlands of modern Turkey. Um, but yes, so I I don't know if this is like fully uh, nonfiction. And it, it might be like some of her own experiences mixed with fiction. And these are um, nonfiction, I'm pretty sure. Yes, <laughs> I hope I'm correct on that. But yeah, so the, these are kind of in the similar theme of like travels and um, Turkey, Central Europe, things like that. Okay, I have a lot more to get through. Um, really quickly, I will say I have this collection of stories. This is the New York stories of Elizabeth Hardwick. And they, NYRB also has published another book by Elizabeth Hardwick. I think it's called Sleepless Nights. Um, but yes, and I wanted to know more about this author and I like the cover. I haven't read this yet, but I plan on reading it soon. Yes, really quickly, I will show one of my favorite, favorite this NYRB discoveries, which is The Bridge of Beyond by Simone Schwarz Bart. He is a Guadalupan author, and this is, I guess, considered kind of a classic of Caribbean literature. The introduction is written by Jamaica Kincaid. I really, really love this book. I highly recommend it. It's kind of like a um, family saga. It represents multiple generations of women in this family in Guadeloupe. And there are some family myths interwoven in the story. And it's written super beautifully. I've marked a lot of places here where I, I just really love the wording and um, interesting quotes and things like that. So... This one was another NYRB discovery for me and I absolutely loved it. The cover is like a bit bizarre. <laughs> I don't know if I like it. I don't know what folks think of this cover. It's not bad, but it's kind of confusing. Anyway, I don't really know what relation it has to the story. But yeah, that's The Bridge of Beyond. And then I have, um, I'll go through some, uh, finish up my Middle East section, I guess, by saying I have um, Season of Migration to the North by Tayyip Sali and he was a Sudanese author. This is another like post-colonial post, post -colonial classic. Um, 
I had to read this in school, but then before that I had also just read it for fun. Um, I love this book. It's probably one of my favorite books of all time. It is super short and very like cerebral, very, um, it's kind of like tense and obviously there's like big like post-colonial commentary. There's interesting gender dynamics, which um, if you're, if you don't like reading kind of, I guess, books of their time, which, um, which include questionable gender politics, you might not like this one, but here it's kind of represented in, in a post-colonial context it's hard to uh, explain without giving too much away but yeah it's it's i think it's done like purposefully um but yes i really recommend this book to everyone again and it's a super short read um and i love that nyrb have published it okay next i have speedboat by renata adler and i think this one's pretty popular i read this and i actually didn't love it that much but it's by an American author and it's kind of like her fragmentary reflections and little like jottings and uh, things like that of Renata Adler who was a professor and journalist and yeah it's kind of represents like her I guess New York life uh, not really my thing I think but if you're into that I, I think you would like it like it, it's a good book of its genre I guess but it's just not for me but I do like the cover so and I'm glad that I I read it. I might donate that one. But yes. Next I have Chess Story by Stefan Zweig. Zweig? Zweig. I hope I said that correctly. Who's like the, you know, very famous Austrian author. I'm sure people know. Um, this is his famous short, uh, not short story. I think novella technically. I, I don't know the page count. Um, but yes, I really like this one. And I like this NYRB edition. And another classic. You can't really go wrong with this. Speaking of classics, I think I'll get into some classics now. I have another um, Stefan Zweig. 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 I'm sorry. I'm truly sorry. Uh, this is Beware of Pity. I read this and I actually didn't like it that much. But again, I, I might actually revisit this. I think I will like it if I read it when I'm in the right headspace. This was said to have inspired uh, the Grand Budapest Hotel. At least like the time period and the kind of you know, glamour, Austro-Hungarian glamour type of vibes. So that's why I read it. Um, I liked it. It's um, it's very much in the narrator's head and the narrator is basically like obsessing over this girl who he pities, hence the cover. And it's very, uh, it's a bit tedious to read. Like it's very, very dense, full writing um, and just kind of endless descriptions of his thoughts as he's like staring at this girl and pitying her. But uh, but yeah, I really like this edition, I like this cover, I liked um, the introduction, so again, good job NYRB. Next I have Berlin Alexanderplatz, which is another German classic, and I've always wanted to read this. I um, haven't read it before, but I've seen one of a movie edition of it, and I really want to watch, after I read this, I really want to watch um, uh, the... Fassbinder um, version of it, which I think is like hours and hours because it's like a TV, it was like a TV series. Anyway, long story short, I, uh, I'm excited to read this. I really like the cover and yeah, this, this edition looks pretty good. It's very hefty. Okay, uh, I think that might be it for the kind of classics. Um, oh, I lied. I have Dead Souls by Nikolai Gogol. And I'm going to read this one soon. Very excited. I actually don't love the cover of this. There's like a creepy like barefoot man. <laughs> um, but obviously this is a classic and I've always wanted to read it. So I was going to opt for the vintage classics edition. But I just opted for this because couldn't pass up a an opportunity to um, add to my NYRD collection. Okay, next I have two very, very exciting books, which are... Vasily Grossman's um, Life and Fate in Stalingrad. So this is Stalingrad, which is the prequel to Life and Fate. And it was, it's like been recently published. I think this came out in 2019, if I'm not mistaken. And this prequel was previously lost and the manuscript was kind of in different parts and uh, it, was, it hadn't been published. So this is like a new release, new translation in English. 
and it is the prequel to this life and fate which is oh look how big these are oh my god um but yes yeah, so this is life and fate this one had been translated before and this was um kind of this is kind of what Vasily Grossman was known for he was a Jewish Soviet author this I I think well I guess technically Stalingrad but these are kind of the first literary depictions of the Holocaust I believe at least from a Soviet perspective that's why they're kind of well known and um yeah this again focuses on a family um pre and during World War II and yes I'm gonna read these two together I'm super excited I'm so happy that I got these NYRB editions I'm just so happy to have them. Yes, very, very exciting. Uh, next I have Journey by Moonlight by Antal Sherb. Sherb. He's another Hungarian author. I apologize if I said that incorrectly, um, but I think this is a pretty famous Hungarian book and I've always wanted to read it. It's been, when I read um, The Door by Mogda Jobo, this was recommended to me on Bookstagram. So I had to pick it up, especially because it's also an NYRB cover is very cool I will focus on it yeah so this is kind of like a fantastical journey and um it's definitely like um a bit more yeah like fantasy it's not so realist just like the Magda Jobos are but yeah and this is compared to Master Margarita on the back which is probably my favorite book of all time so very very excited to read this okay I'm actually getting towards the end so I have uh this one, The Fountain Overflows by Rebecca West. This is kind of like a, I think 1950s, maybe early 1960s uh, British classic. And I just thought it was interesting. I hadn't heard of it before. It's like a family. It's a story of a family that's kind of like volatile and dysfunctional. And yes, I, I'm just really excited to read this. This is kind of my vibe recently. So Yes, I will focus on the cover. It's really pretty. Okay, going quickly, I have A School for Fools by Sasha Solikov. Sokolov, sorry, Sokolov. And I hadn't heard of this one before either, but I love the cover and I thought it looked really interesting. And I think NYRB just publishes like so many of these interesting Russian authors or, or I guess um, Soviet authors like books from the Soviet era, era, I'll say, that I don't really see um, pu being published by other publishers. So that's why I always kind of pick up these interesting ones that I've never heard of before when I see them. Um, but yes, I'm really excited to read this. It's um, described as lyrical and philosophical, witty and baffling. So yeah, some unreliable narrators I might have a hard time with this one, but I am I do want to try it out and I'm excited to try it out. Next, I have Good Behavior by Molly Keane. And I started reading this one, but I um, I just got distracted by other books, but I'm going to come back to it. Molly Keane was a famous Irish author. And this book is about a mother-daughter relationship. And it's a little bit dysfunctional. And um, her mother dies. It's not a spoiler. It says it on the back. And... Uh, I think it's a little bit like comic, like maybe like dark comedy type of vibes. I'm excited to read this and I think I'm wondering if it's like an early representation of like this unsufferable, insufferable female narrator, but I don't know. Uh, we shall see. But yeah, I'm very excited to read this and the cover is so cool. Um, yeah, that's good behavior. And then I have the Invis Invisibility Cloak by Gae Fei. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, um, but he is a Chinese author. This is a piece of uh, contemporary Chinese literature. I recently read this and I actually really liked it. It's super short. Um, this is, I I hate to say it, but it kind of reminded, uh, reminded me of Murakami solely because it was kind of a rambling male narrator who's very much in his head. And he also has some uh obsessions like he this particular narrator he um uh, repairs stereos and he's obsessed with like stereos and sound and um a lot of this book is talking about like the the mechanics of stereos and how they work um but i actually really, really like this and it's very like moody i felt i thought that you really get in the head of the narrator so 
I, overall, I thought it was a really good short little book and I really recommend this one. And then I have Zama, which is an, an Argentinian classic and there's a movie of this um, shot um, directed by Lucretia Martel, who is a really interesting, really famous uh, Argentinian director. And yes, I'm excited to read this one. It's another classic. And I haven't, I don't know if I've read any Argentinian classics yet. I've read some contemporary Argentinian literature, but yeah, very excited to check this out. Finally, I have Houses by Borislav Pekic. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, but yes, this is kind of like an interesting um, architectural book. And we kind of get to know this architect character through this book. And I'm very excited to read this because I thought it was interesting um, to explore the concept of like housing and architecture and buildings uh, in this kind of like format. And yeah, I think that I'm really going to like this. I'm really excited to read this. I think I finally reached the end of my little NYRB collection. I forgot to mention two books, but you know, it's okay. I have another Vasily Grossman and I have a book called Lolly Willows. Um, but yes, I can leave them linked down below. They're just on my shelf up there. I'm too lazy to grab them. But thank you so much for watching. And I will hopefully be back with another rambling, incoherent video.